boy, do we have some cool stuff to check out today. Um, I have stuff from 14 different brands, and they're from all around the world, probably the, the broadest array of, of stuff that I've ever shown. And uh, we're going to kick things off with a Mini GT, this Bentley Flying Spur. And so this is uh, the second release of this. The first one we saw was this uh, pretty cool Christmas release. Um, a lot of Christmas releases are pretty pretty gaudy. This one is, you know, relatively tame as far as Christmas releases go, but it's still, you know, it's a little bit over the top. Um, so we're going to, we're very happy to see this uh, Bentley Vi Flying Spur in this uh, Verdant color. So this looks to be a dark green. Um, so we're going to get this out of the package and take a look at it. Love Bentleys. Um, and, you know, my love of Bentleys has come entirely based on these Mini GT Bentley releases. Um, before this, it was not a car that I was particularly interested in, but the Continentals um, that they put out, uh, I just kind of fell in love with them, especially these racing ones. And we have a new one of those to take a look at in a minute. Um, so this is... You know, this is their, you know, big four-door uh, luxury sedan. So it's not, uh, probably not quite as cool a car as the, as the Continental is. Um, but it's still, still pretty nice. And this is a nice stock release. So it's just an, a cool metallic green color. And, uh, you know, it is a Mini GT, so it's your typical metal body, metal, metal base. One of the headlights just fell out. Wow, that's interesting. That is the first time that has ever happened to me on a Mini GT. Look at that. Uh, hmm. Okay, so I need to put this somewhere that I can make sure that I can find it after this video and try to put it back in. But, uh, yeah, well, that's very disappointing. And that is the first time I've ever had a piece fall off of a Mini GT. Um, I, I'm a little bit concerned about that because I've heard from, in the comments, I've heard a couple people have gotten Mini GTs that don't roll. This one rolls perfectly fine, um, but their quality for overall for me has been fantastic. And uh, so it looks like the headlight on this side fell out. Um, so hopefully I can glue that back in there with some white glue and it'll be good to go. All right, anyway, so it's a cool release. Um, I don't love this car as much as I love the Continental. Um, let's, so let's move on. Let's, let's take, let's, let's go on to this one. Um, because I love this GT3, Continental GT3. It's fantastic. So this one is a champion. It's 2018 Blanc Payne GT Asia, uh, number 260. Oh, I forgot to show that, 286 on this one. And uh, this one has been out for a little while. Um, but uh, Chris at CRA Diecast, Diecast had told me that he had ordered one that he was planning to send to me. So I never purchased it. And then uh, a couple days ago, I received a box from Chris, and this was among the things that are in there. And this is just such an awesome car. Um, and it is, yeah, just beautiful. This one, nice red, white, and black livery. You know, the common champion logos on there. Big, big wing on the back. And I don't know, I just love this casting. It is so cool. And this is this is actually much cooler than I was expecting, this particular release. Um, of these GT3s, it's hard to top, like this one, which also came to me from Chris uh, at CRA Diecast. Um, this one uh, is just absolutely stunning. This is a chrome, chrome one, but uh, this uh, red and black one is pretty nice as well. So let's see, does it roll? Yes, you know, it rolls very nicely. And absolutely fantastic. Nothing on the bottom on this one. A little bit on the bottom on this one. I mean, EGT is very inconsistent with what they do with the, with the bases of their vehicles. Um, but neither of them has any information about the cars, which is something I really wish Mini GT would, uh, would include on all of their vehicles. Sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. Um, but okay, moving on. And then now a new to me brand, and this is also from Chris at CRA Diecast. So Chris is in Australia. This is an Australian brand, um, and this is a uh, V8 supercar. Uh, it's a 
Ford FG Falcon. Um, so Will Davison's 2013 Pepsi Max Crew um, Ford Falcon. Brand Classic Carlectables. And this is officially licensed Ford product. And this is this company is based in Adelaide, Australia. So pretty interesting. And uh, you know I've seen Chris show these a number of times on his channel, but this is the first one that I have have in uh, adding to my collection, which is awesome. Um, love these these V8 supercars. And you know if you've watched my videos for a while, you know that I, I, I I'm always excited to get a new brand um, of diecast. Doesn't matter where it's from, or a lot of times even what the car is. It's just cool to, to check these out. So, um, so this is very cool. Uh, it's a very bright, colorful livery on here, and um, so these these appear to be metal body, plastic base. Um, looks like a. I guess they're rubber tires, but they they're pretty hard. They may be plastic. Though it does seem to be a two-piece wheel, so I think it does have rubber tires. Yeah, I think it does have rubber tires. They do roll. They do not have suspension or anything. They also looks like they do not have an interior. Um, but for a replica of a race car, um, I'm perfectly okay with that in this instance. But yeah, this is very, very cool livery. Completely different on all the way around and uh, so overall these have painted looks like painted details all the way around um, such as, as the you know it's mostly just a big livery it's like the, it's like a, a wrap all the way around the car it does have logos on the wheels or on the tires which is pretty cool but yeah cool um, definitely not a super premium model uh, but I'm happy to have it, that is for sure, because I love race cars, love supercars, uh, V8 supercars, and uh, we are going to take a look at a super premium model now, though. So this is from Kang Fi, the Audi RS8 Sportback. Um, we've taken a look at a couple models from this brand on the channel. Uh, last week, we took a look, look at this, uh, this really cool um, Toyota uh, 4Runner. And uh, the unique unique thing of this, well, there's actually a couple unique things of this, is it has you know steerable front wheels, and then it also actually has sprung suspension. You can see in there, there's little springs, and the front wheels move independently, and the the back wheels are connected, but they you know it's pretty that's pretty cool. And you know I've been very impressed with this brand. They don't have a lot of castings um, at this stage. They uh, they have that, you know, that Toyota. They have this RS7. They have an R8 um, convertible, and then they have. I'm not sure. They have a truck that looks pretty cool. This is their R8 convertible, obviously, um, and not a whole lot um, beyond that that I've seen so far. But I am definitely looking forward to seeing more uh, from this company because their models have been very impressive overall. And so let's see what we get with this one. I had loosened it on the base, so it just dropped off of there. That's not the way it came from the factory. But uh, yeah, so this is a very, this is actually metallic black. It's, it's yeah, you can kind of see it, I think, on the camera. Um, it is very fine metallic though but uh, and you can see the the wheels have brake discs with calipers that are fixed and in the proper position and the wheels do move and this one will roll quite nicely actually well yeah it rolls pretty well no suspension on this one but that's okay you know this is a RS7, so yeah, so you do have um, inserted on the details for headlights and taillights, and the interior on this one's going to be pretty tough to see. 
they have typically done pretty detailed interiors on the other models yeah you can see there is there is some some de pretty good detail in there it's just really hard to see on this this particular one the convertible obviously makes it a lot easier to see the interior detail but yeah you know reflective surface on the mirrors yeah just a just a beautiful beautiful model so this is a brand I've been very very impressed with so that's Kang Fi um, Chinese brand if I didn't mention that and very very cool models All right, up next, this is a, another Chinese brand, or probably a Hong Kong-based brand, uh, Pop Race. So a few weeks ago, we had taken a look at this one, uh, which is this Rally uh, Toyota Celica, and this thing is amazing. This is, this is just a beautiful model. Um, so I was very curious to see if Pop Race had ever done a, a street version of this car. And um, as you might expect, they, they have. Uh, so I was able to get one. Um, it was a little bit tricky to, to get a hold of this one, but and it took a little while, but it did eventually show up. And it does seem like maybe this is a slightly different level. Um, we'll see when we get it out of the package here, if I can actually get it out of the package. Um, the... Uh, the racing version was definitely what I would call a super premium model, but this one is in a is in a you know a cardboard blister pack with a, you know just a plastic. So this seems to be more like a mini GT level of at least the packaging. So we'll see what the model is like. Um, but the packaging is more akin to to a mini GT versus the uh, the uh, racing version, which came in an acrylic case, like your typical super premium model would but this still looks pretty good um you know the headlights are pop-up headlights but they're fixed they don't they don't move and does you know still has inserted details for for taillights and and in the headlights there are little lenses and also for the indicators so this is still pretty good pretty good model there's a there's the interior is kind of a two-tone or you can see that you have gray seats it's really hard to see in there gray seats and uh, but the rest of the interior is black and yeah so this this looks pretty good overall seems to be pretty good quality and it's gonna roll it's not a great roller but it's not terrible um, so these are metal body and a metal base rubber tires. So yeah, this is, uh, still, it's a pretty nice model. It's, it, you know, it's just your basic street car version of this. So it's not quite as cool as this racing version. Uh, but I'm, I'm very happy to have it as a great compliment to this one. It's fantastic to see, see a casting where they've, you know, the level of detail that they've put into doing the racing version versus the street version. I always love to see this kind of thing because there's a lot of, just a lot of detail that they put into this. It's fantastic. All right. So next from Majorette, um, another another card that, that came to me from Chris at CRA Diecast. Um, so the Volvo V90 in uh, this gray color. Looks to just be a, a gloss, gloss gray. Um, <clears throat> I am, you know, a as a U.S. based collector, I'm I'm a big fan of Major Ed, and I'm always sad that we can't we can't get, you know, all Major Ed here. We have a very limited selection that we can get in the U.S. Um, and these these are this is a premium car, Major Ed premium car, and we cannot get these here. Um, that I have ever seen anyway so this is this is cool I love wagons and Majorette's just a fun brand to me obviously you know you compare this to a 
you know, a super premium model, or I don't really, I mean, what can we say that was a super premium? Oh, this one, <laughs> yeah, the RS7, you know, compare Majorette to this. It's, you know, they're, they're definitely a different category of die cast. Uh, Majorette comes from a toy lineage um, and has, you know, opening parts and things along those lines. Um, this one has opening doors, which is a little bit unusual for a wagon to have opening doors. Typically, they would do an opening hatch, um, but this does not have that. But this is cool. I love this. should have a suspension, and it does. And, of course, a Majorette's going to roll very well. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. All right. Moving on from Auto World, we have a... Uh, the 1984 Chevy Silverado 10 fleet size. This is from Premium Release 4. Uh, this is the version A car. It's limited to 18,798. They're really making a lot of these now. Um, so light, dark blue poly. This is just these these two tone versions of this truck are always very cool. And uh, this one appears to be no exception. So it's a nice uh, metallic blue with a, with a blue stripe and then light blue and silver trim on that, which is cool. And, of course, these have an opening hood with the engine in there. They, they don't do much paint detail on the engines. They're just black, but it's very cool. And then, of course, the tailgate flips down and... We've seen a you know a ton of these these auto world pick pickups, so there's not a not a you know a lot to say about this I guess, but they're always cool. They're always very well done, and uh, you know they've been working through the years, which mostly entails uh, variations on the grill, and it's uh, and they've put out a ton of them. <laughs> uh, there's got to be. I mean, I don't know, an auto world, you know, a hardcore auto world collector could probably tell me how many of these there are, but there's, there's certainly well over a hundred, probably 150 different releases of these. If you include all of the, um, hobby exclusives, uh, of which there are a lot. Okay. Moving on, we have some more mini GT so that we have two more versions of the, uh, Chevrolet Corvette C8R. And these are from the 2021 um, 20, uh, 12 Hours of Sebring. And uh, this video will air as the uh, 2022 iteration of the 12 Hours of Sebring is in progress. So that is this weekend. And uh, this, this is the C8R is just such a fantastic casting from Mini GT. Um, it's going to be really hard to not grab every single version that they put out uh, as long as they stick to accurate liveries. Um, I don't know how many different versions of the, of the livery there are. Let's go ahead and open both of these um, since we'll, we'll look at them as a pair. So typically at a race, Corvette would run... One car in yellow and one car in gray, or both cars in yellow. And then apparently in at last year's Sebring race, they ran both cars in gray. And just did the number three car with red stripes and um, the number four car with white. Which is very cool. And these are just, this is just, like I said, a, just a fantastic casting. If you like race cars... Um, these, these mini, mini GT is just really knocking it out of the park with these. I absolutely love these. And so let's take a look at the bottom. See, this one does have the information on it. So this is what I was saying. They're very inconsistent with this. Sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. Um, it does see that, seem that this C8R casting, they do typically have that on the bottom. Let's see if both of them have it. Yep. Um, it's just strange that they don't always do it, and I don't understand why. And hopefully that changes because it's as they get more more castings, more variations, you know, different years. It's very useful to have, you know, and very clear too. It's the 2020 
Chevrolet Corvette C8R. Because so I'm sure they're going to do the 2021 version of the car. And, um, you know, so having that on the bottom is very, very helpful as a collector. It's something that, uh, you know, as you get thousands of cars, uh, you lose track. And some brands don't do that, like Auto World. There is, you know, there's information on the bottom of the car, but it doesn't tell you which what it is. So it doesn't tell you what year this is. And these trucks, there are a lot of them, with pretty subtle variations. And uh, it's uh, without looking them up, it's hard to know which one is which. Um, obviously, you could argue that you know you should just keep them in the package, and um, then you would know. But I don't have room to keep stuff in the package. <laughs> I have to get it out because these packages, like this is huge. <laughs> this package is huge. It takes up so much space. But all right. Uh, so the 1974 Jeep DJ5. So this is uh, Greenlight Hot Pursuit, Indianapolis Metropolitan Police Department. It's kind of a weird police vehicle. I would assume this is like a parking enforcement vehicle or something. Um, it's kind of cool. This is like the, the male you know the the U.S. post office uh, Jeep that they would that they would use um, most of the time, and I don't have a a version of this yet, so I'm happy to have this in the collection as an example of this casting. Um, as a police vehicle, you know, like I said, it could be parking enforcement or something. Let's see if we can zoom in on this. It just says police in Indianapolis. Um, yeah, typical, your typical green light. The tires are a little chunky on this one. You have a wider stance on the front and narrower stance on the rear. That's kind of interesting. So lensed headlights, it looks like. That's kind of cool. Painted taillights. Um, actually, those are lensed at the top. The taillights are actually lensed, and this one's a little crooked. Um, but... At least this one doesn't seem to have any... Oh, it doesn't roll very well. I was just about to say, it doesn't have any major quality issues. I mean, it, it's okay. It, it kind of rolls. Anyway, all right. We don't need to dwell on that. I think it's it's a kind of cool release, but I'm not super excited about that one. I, I had bought a case, which is... Otherwise, I probably would have skipped that one. Um, all right. So, from another Auto World uh, Premium Series Release 4, 2020 Chevrolet Corvette in red. Uh, torch red, to be more specific. And this is limited to one of 15,702. And uh, this has stripes. I didn't realize that. So very cool. It's just a nice gloss red, black stripes. Um, the Auto World Corvette has an opening rear hatch. Show the, the engine in there. And they actually do paint the engine on this one, which looks really, which looks pretty good. And then this Corvette, of course, uh, one of the selling features is that it has a little space in here where you can put your golf clubs <laughs> or something. And, uh, you know, the Auto World version of this casting is pretty nice. Uh, it does have painted headlights and painted taillights. Um, but it's, it's pretty cool. I'm, you know, as a collector, I am getting a little tired of this car. Uh, they have put out too many of them. And I, since I have been buying cases, I've, I've been getting more than I would like. And I, I think I've actually decided to stop buying Auto World cases because I'm getting too many, too many cars that I, that I don't, uh, I don't love. Um, and this is actually in that category. I think it's a cool car. I like the C8, the C8 when it has a wing on the back like this. You know, like I was raving about this mini GT release. I was like, one, well, I love race cars. Um, but I think that wing on the back, it just, for me anyways, it, it kind of like balances the car a little bit better. The, the C8 without the wing looks, just looks a little bit off to me. So like the Stingray version has a little bit of a wing on it. And uh, that that looks a little, little better to me. I like it. I like it better when it has that. Um, so... And, uh, but okay, moving on. So again, from Majorette WRC cars, this was another, uh, another car, another gift from Chris at CRA diecast. Um, and I think this completes my collection of this year's WRC cars. Uh, this was the last one that I did not have. I had not, and had not been able to find the, these 
we have been able to get some of these in the U.S. They are sold um, through uh, either at Targets or Hobby Lobbies, but this uh, Citroen uh, does not appear to have been included in the mix that they brought in into the U.S., at least as far as I've seen. So this is the Citroen C3 WRC 2018, and these... Uh, uh, these major red uh, WRC cars are awesome. So these are rally cars. Um, and this is uh, in the major red line. This would be considered a deluxe car. So it has rubber tires. It has um, you know a detailed interior. You can see there's a roll bar in there. Um, it should have suspension. Does it have suspension? Yeah, these have suspension. Or at least this one does. And um, it does have little inserts here for the for the lights and painted on the back. But yeah, I've been really enjoying these these releases and this is the, you know, like I said, completes the set. So this is, you know, Majorettes are not 164 scale. That is one, you know, negative to them. I would I would consider a negative anyway. So this one is 161 scale, 61 scale. Um, but they're still cool. They're still they're still fun, you know. Like I said, they come earlier. They come from a from the toy world, so they you know they are intended to be played with, and they roll. You know, of of all these cars, they're going to be one of the faster ones. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to have any Hot Wheels in this video, um, so Majorette's probably going to be the fastest car that's in this video. But that's very cool. Love that, Chris. Thank you, um, and another Chris <laughs> Chris gift. Um, so from Siku. The uh, this mini countryman in yellow, and Seiko is another brand that I'm I'm pretty fascinated with. Um, it's very similar in a lot of ways to Majorette. Um, you know, they're both from Europe, and they uh, they both do tend to do opening parts and things along those lines. They come from a toy lineage. And they both have very broad ranges of stuff that they that they sell. You know, not just cars. Actually, CQ CQ is more known for its other vehicles. I think it's construction vehicles and it's you know ships and airplanes and uh, fire engines and uh, and uh, tractors, farm equipment. They seem to have a lot of of farm equipment, which is a very interesting genre of diecast collecting which I have been trying to avoid getting into because I do think that that stuff is pretty cool um, so Siku Mini Cooper Countryman this is a this is definitely not 164 scale uh, these are I think 150 155 scale they're pretty large and uh, they always come with some information on the bottom about you know like the power output for the vehicles and stuff like that but it's cool, and uh, these do not have suspension. They will roll. They don't roll quite as well as the Majorette, but it's still still cool. And we have one more Majorette. So this is a street car. So street cars is kind of like the the mainline version of a Majorette, or you know, like a Hot Wheels mainline. This is the least expensive Majorette that that you can get. And as I dump that one out on the floor, uh, so this is a. Ford GT in yellow, and again, so 163rd scale, so almost 164 scale. Um, so unlike the deluxe cars like this one, you know, this is going to be, it is a metal body, it has a plastic base, plastic tires, it uses, these are, you know, uh, they have a, a small selection of wheels that they will use for these. Um, and then it'll be painted all around. There will be no opening parts or anything on, on streetcars releases. And it looks like a piece of paint just flaked out, flaked off. Um, and my understanding uh, from people in the comments have you know said that that's the weakness with Major Ed is that the paint does tend to chip pretty easily. I haven't really experienced that with any of the cars that I have um, until now. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, so this is pretty cool. Definitely not the the best uh, Ford GT casting out there. Um, you know, you have no no air passing through these through the through the flying buttresses here or this wing section back here. Um, you do get 
inserted headlights. It looks like this one doesn't have an interior either. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool. I'm 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 glad to have this because I I don't have a, a Ford GT from Majorette um, so far. So definitely definitely glad to have this. But you know when you compare this to something like a say a Mini GT. Um, their version of the Ford GT. There, there's just no comparison. I mean, GT is definitely way better. All right, so moving on. Another brand, Sparky. Sparky specializes in race cars, uh, especially uh, Le Mans cars. And then, so this one is a Alpine. Um, where is the specific model? Where did it go? Oh, there it is. So this is the Alpine A450. This is from Le Mans 2015. And not, oh, not my favorite you know, era of Le Mans race cars. These open cockpit cars um, is uh, it was a, a generation of, of the of the cars that. Uh, I didn't love as much. Um, I think they they just kind of look wrong without having a closed cockpit in here. But I'm still happy to have a representative from this era in my collection. And I wish that they would do more. And Sparky does a fantastic job on these. Of course, they're metal body and they're metal base. There's no information on the base at all. Um, they do have rubber tires and they do try to do pretty accurate wheels for the vehicle. Uh, mostly painted uh, details, although the headlights will have uh, you know some kind of lens on them. And yeah, this is a very cool, very cool vehicle. Yeah, I just I, you know, I'm just deeply fascinated with the Moss, so uh, it's it's just awesome to get any model from any any car that has ever raced at Le Mans, I'm going to be very fascinated with it. Even if it's from the era that is not my most favorite era, which this is definitely was not. But awesome. Okay. Very cool. All right. So now we're going to move on to this. Um, so as I, as I mentioned at the beginning, this... Uh, this Ferrari 250 GTO is from a brand called PGM. So this is another new to me brand. Um, PGM is uh, definitely what you would consider a super premium brand or maybe uh, what I would actually call an exotic brand. Um, so these are pretty expensive. Uh, this, these models cost about $80 um, plus shipping. And they, uh, they uh, do moving parts. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna get this thing off of here and take a look at it and see you know is a is a die cast car that costs eighty dollars really worth it um, you know I don't know so here you have a a, a little uh, I don't know what you would call this thing it's 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 meant so it's got a little point there on the front so it's meant to help you open the parts because the parts have very very tight tolerances on them. And uh, get the acrylic case out of the way, and we'll take a quick look at this on the base. So this one is uh, limited edition, 348 of 999 pieces, PGM Ferrari 250 GTO. Though it does not say Ferrari anywhere on this, um, I'm going to guess there are probably no actual Ferrari badges on this vehicle. Although maybe there is actually. Let's zoom in there. Yeah, there is a little Ferrari badge there. So, I mean, just from looking at this already, um, like the way these graphics and stuff are done, it's going to be a tough one to say that this is going to be worth the price. Either, you know, but let's get it off the base and uh, see if we can get the opening parts to open and so on and so forth. rubber grommets 
to isolate the car from the plinth. And this is a wood plinth that is not a it's, you know plastic plinth so that's pretty nice. Um, so there is a lot of okay let's see if I can actually see it's really hard to see inside there a lot of what you get in with these models is the is the detail on the interior um, so the uh, the wheels do actually turn on this so let's see this might actually roll mm, kind of the front wheels roll the back wheels only with some pressure on them do they roll so it doesn't really roll but you know this is this is not a not a model that uh you're gonna play with <laughs> it's not what it's about um let's see and these parts are gonna be very difficult to get open that's not gonna work so i believe this has an opening hood oh wow look at that 12 cylinder engine in there that's pretty cool and opening doors. And you can get a better look at the interior if we will focus on it. Let's zoom in a little more. How am I? Yeah, look at the gauges. Brown rim on the steering wheel, silver in the middle. Gigantic shifter. <laughs> is that realistic that these cars actually have a shifter that was that big it's kind of hard to believe um, you know, blue seats got some seat belts or half a seat belt um, yeah interesting and then I believe the trunk opens on this as well oh, be easier if I can zoom out a little bit So it's like there's something in there. I'm not sure what that is, but and then the other door. Let's go ahead and open that just because we can. So there you go. Opening doors, opening hood. The engine bay looks pretty cool. It has some pretty good detail. A giant 12-cylinder engine in there. That's pretty awesome. And so, yeah, I mean, this is this is pretty cool. The wheels are pretty nice. the The casting looks pretty good overall. Headlights look okay. Uh, this is definitely a very expensive model for what it is, though. Um, it is very cool, but I don't think it's worth the price. <laughs> um, but, you know, you have to be the judge of that. You know, they had just come out with a Ferrari F40 as well, and I had considered getting, getting that one. Um but decided I actually like the Ferrari 250 better. And uh, so I decided to go with this as a just to check out because I was very curious to get one of these in my hands and see, you know, see what it was like. And it's pretty cool. But I had I had picked up this one a while back. This is a from a brand or I mean, I don't know if you can consider it a brand. It's it's sold as a JEC. It doesn't have any opening parts or anything. Um, it's a resin model. And uh, so it's very, very light. And it doesn't roll or anything like that. But it's it's pretty detailed. It actually looks to me like the interior on this one is is actually better. Um, you can see a lot of similarities to it, um, but 
like there you can see in this one if, or maybe you can see I can see whether you can see or not is another question um, to get the the glare like there's a sh there's a turn into signal indicator on the steering column the shifter is not so comically large the seat belts are better done yeah I think overall um, I like this one better and uh, even though this was a fairly expensive model in its in its own right uh, it was not anywhere near as expensive as this one so well there you go so this was the PGM uh, Ferrari 250 GTO it's a pretty cool model um, I'm definitely happy to have it uh, is it worth the price in my opinion no but you know you uh, you uh, you know sometimes just take a risk and see what you get and and sometimes you win sometimes you lose uh, I don't consider this a loss though I am happy to have it and if you haven't guessed from my videos I'm not particularly price sensitive <laughs> so uh, Siku another uh, Chris at CRA diecast uh, gift BMW X6M and nice metallic blue I believe that Chris said that he had painted the wheels on some of these because he thought that they looked better with black wheels so this may be one where he has painted the wheels because these gray wheels like this one had they, uh, they are definitely not the most beautiful things in the world but this is such a weird vehicle they, they, it's, you know, it's a fairly large SUV kind of thing, but it's, it's shaped very much like a car, like a sedan, this sloping rear end, which is just like, if you're going to buy a vehicle like this, you know, don't you want it to be able to actually carry stuff? Isn't that the point of having a, a big SUV like vehicle? Um, at least it seems like that would be the, the case to me. So, you know, having this this you know chopped off rear end like a like it's a coupe is is kind of weird but um yep so anyway so this is a siku uh with opening doors and you know plastic base the information on the bottom uh this one does seem to have rubber tires uh, lensed headlights painted tail lights no suspension but it will roll yeah so very cool um uh, this is, I don't think I've seen this, this vehicle put out by any other brand. Uh, so it's, uh, happy to have that as I bounce it into the very expensive Ferrari next to it. All right. Uh, so JKM, which is, uh, you know, this is another Chinese brand that this, I've shown the a number of vehicles from this brand in the past and they are. Uh, kind of a mini GT level of quality. This is a the new release from them. So this is a Lancer Evolution. Their their box art is getting more and more cartoonish. It seems. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know what they're thinking with this box art. I, I you know I like the box. I like the form factor of it, and I like the silhouettes on the sides um, uh, sides of the box. But but. <laughs> But this, this is, yeah, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what they were thinking with that. The, the other releases actually had pretty cool boxes, I thought, but this one, not so much. And, uh, seems they've changed their, their inner packaging as well. It's not a clear plastic anymore. It's kind of a cloudy, cloudy plastic. And so... What do we get here? All right. Oh, jeez. I almost dropped this one on the floor, too. All right. So, as I mentioned, this is very similar to a Mini GT. Um, definitely of the same level. Uh, metal body, metal base, rubber tires. You get lensed headlights, lensed taillights. Um, and, you know, these will roll. They do not have suspension. And, you know, this is... Not the world's most exciting car, for sure. 
but I have been trying to get one example of everything that this brand puts out. And they, outside of their military vehicles, I have most of what they have put out at this point. At least one. I don't have every color because they put these out in like four or five different colors. I'm not, not interested in getting everything that they put out. But I am interested in getting uh, one of each of the castings that they put out. So I, of course, had to grab one of these. Um, yeah, is it, a, is it a car that I'm super excited about? Not really, but it is cool to see, you know, a new release from JKM. And it looks pretty good, I mean, for what it is. Um, I can't complain about it. It's, it's probably not as nice as if Mini GT did one of these. They would probably, you know, do it a, do it a little bit better. But, um... But it's cool to have another brand in the same, you know, same tier as, you know, Mini GT, Paris 64, um, Tarmac Works Global 64. They're all kind of in that same, same 15 to 20 dollar range. Um, if you could buy these directly in China, I think these are fairly inexpensive. I think they're, they're probably like only six or seven dollars. Uh, but you know, to get them shipped shipped into the U.S. Uh, they're not, they, they get to be a little bit more. They, they get into that $20 range. Um, so is this worth $20? Probably not, but I collect the brand. So uh, there you have it. All right. So this is going to be a very long video because I still have a number of other things to show. Uh, and another brand, um, which is very interesting, another Australian brand, uh, the Aussie Road Ragers which is a very cool brand um, and uh, another gift from Chris at CRA Diecast. Uh, if you're wondering why I have so many of these, I, he, I just received a giant box of stuff from Chris um, and I did a video on that. If you haven't watched that, it, you may want to check it out. Um, there is a ton of cool stuff that he had sent me and it will be regularly featured in videos over the coming weeks because it cannot all fit into one video. So here we have a 1971 XY Falcon panel van. So this is um, a very unique to Australia vehicle. And if we can get this acrylic cover off and remove this from the base, we can take a look at it. So in the, the last box that Chris had sent me, um, he had uh, he had sent me a couple Aussie Road Ragers, uh, Ford Falcon, or Falcon um, race cars, which were awesome. Um, this time he sent me a couple couple of different versions of this, and uh, another vehicle which we'll see in a future video. But uh, these are. Yeah, just a just such a unique vehicle. Um, I don't think we've ever had anything that looks looks anything like this in the United States. But this is a very cool diecast brand. I don't know if you can get it anywhere other than in Australia, and it f seems to focus on Australian vehicles. And so you have metal body, you have metal base. Yeah, metal, metal base, rubber tires. Um, looks like chromed headlights. So they're not inserts, but these, the tail lights are. I'm not sure. Oh, they're painted. So yeah, painted. So it looks like they don't do inserts for the. For the lights, um, you have cast in windshield wipers there. There is an interior in there, but you can't really see see anything on that. But yeah, just just a just a very interesting vehicle. Very cool, and uh, so it does does roll. It's not a great roller. It does roll does not have suspension or anything though but yeah just cool 
just such an unusual, unusual stuff. Uh, so uh, we're going to look at, yeah, okay, so from Eric Carr, um, we'll just look at this one quickly. We've seen a few of these before. So this is a Mercedes-Benz uh, Vito St. John Ambulance, uh, Eric Carr 58. And I love these, these era car commercial or ambulances or police vehicles, you know, whatever iteration they tend to do of these vans. I don't know, they're just kind of cool. So Eric car is, you know, Hong Kong based brand. Oh, looks like this is going to be another one that has a, uh, has a thing that's going to be a pain to get out. It comes with a stretcher. Um, The opening hood, the engine on this one is kind of buried in there. You can't really, really see it. But let's see. I can... <laughs> Every time I get one of these, I really have a hard time getting these things out. So you just get a little stretcher on this one. Uh, the coolest one of these I, that I've gotten was the the pet ambulance one, and it came with a little or a yeah a little stretcher thing f for your your animal, and it came with a little tiny kitten, <laughs> which I thought was pretty cool. So this is fun. These roll; um, they do not have suspension, but yeah, I just I, I don't know. I'm a big fan of these. And I've, I've actually and I've become a big fan of Aerocar in general all right so uh we have a mini gt porsche 911 carrera 4s in silver metallic and this is one that i have been very curious about since they announced it because they had put this one out previously and uh, i was i'm wondering if the only difference between these two is the wheels so um let's see if that's the case, that's that's very depressing to me. <laughs> but I love the car. I, this 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 Mini GT casting. This is the older one. Um, I just I love the lines on this car. It's just so cool. And here is the new one, and it is a different. Is this the same? It is the same casting. It is the same color. Maybe a little different. Depending on how the light hits it though, I think it is the same color. Yeah, so I don't see Yeah, it looks to me like this is just a wheel variation. I don't know, it's different. I'm sure someone who is more of an expert on Porsches can tell me what is the... What is the difference between these? Because this is, so this is a Porsche 911 Carrera 4S. Maybe this one's just a Carrera S. Hmm. Obviously, the wheels are different. I mean, that's a that's a given. But yeah, so pretty much the same, other than the exhausts are different, and then the wheels, of course. Otherwise, they're they're they seem to be the <laughs> the same car. So, all right. Well, cool. Interesting. Um, kind of wish they had just done a different color on that then, if that's going to be the, the, the way it is. But, all right. Uh, so from Tiny HK, we have a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter Ambulance from the Hong Kong FSD. 
Uh, so like Ericar, um, Tiny is it's just a fun brand that has you know lots of different uh, commercial vehicles and police vehicles and fire vehicles and ambulances and things along those lines. Mostly Hong Kong themed. Um, as with Ericar, most of their stuff is going to be Hong Kong themed as well. And so this one is 104. Uh, this is 176th scale. It is not, not a 164 scale, so it is a little small. But it's very heavy for, for what it is. So this is metal, it seems. You would expect that to be plastic. But apparently it is not. So... You have rubber tires, dualies on the back, plastic base, and yeah, so just a <laughs> do not misuse ambulance service. Yes, definitely. Do not misuse ambulance service. Save lives, give way to ambulance. Yeah. So these are these do reproduce, you know, actual liveries, which is awesome. I love that kind of thing. And yeah, it's it's cool. They have suspension. Actually has very springy suspension. And they of course roll quite nicely. Yep, so I can join its Aerocar friend back here. These these two brands are very similar in a lot of ways. Um, or well, maybe that's a stretch. Maybe I shouldn't say that. They have a lot they have some similarities. <laughs> but all right, anyway, <laughs> moving on. Uh, this is a very long video this time. <laughs> uh, Greenlight Hot Pursuit, Boston Police Department, 1995 Ford F-250. This one looks awesome. Hopefully it uh, comes out of the package without <clears throat> any major quality issues that have been such a problem with Greenlight. And I can already see on the window, windshield, there is... There is, of course, smudging. And <laughs> look at that white wall. Look at that. Beautiful work. Absolutely beautiful work. They got that one. That one looks pretty good. <laughs> uh, that looks terrible. <laughs> mm, that one's better, but it's not great. And that one is not great either. Uh, very disappointing. It's a cool truck though. <laughs> nice long bed pickup. Boston police livery is pretty cool. Light bar. All these on the base, you've got all these little ports for doing different variations of the vehicles. You can do like raised ones and uh, monster trucks or whatever they want. Look at that. That is just terrible. That looks awful. Uh, and then smudged windows. Ugh, green light is so frustrating. But I can't stop collecting them. I they put out so much stuff that I love. It's uh, uh yeah. And you just gotta you just deep breath, deep breath. And so here we have from Auto World uh, 2019 Chevy Camaro ZL1. This is again premium release four version A. Uh, limited to 15,390. And gloss black Camaro. And another casting from Auto World that I, you know, because I've been buying cases, I'm getting a little tired of seeing this vehicle. It's it's a cool vehicle. I was happy to, to, you know, to get a few different versions of it, but now I'm into you know, probably my sixth different version of this car, and it's, and I think I have to stop buying Auto World cases is what this amounts to, because um, they really they really run these into the ground. They're putting out too many of them too fast, and yeah, I mean this is this is a nice one, it's, but it's just it's a gloss black Camaro. If you're a huge Camaro fan, it's going to be awesome. If you think the Camaro's a you know kind of cool car, it's and you don't have any of these already, 
That's pretty awesome. But if you've already got six different versions of the same car in different colors, gloss blacks, mm, mm, you know, not going to be the best version. But that is it. We are at the end. Thank you for watching.